Shalom. Uh, I'm here to do a quick video, really. I have two people that I want to show. Uh, um, I want to go here now and read from uh, Luke first, and then I'm going to go to Stephen Denoon. He has a report on the United United Nation forces will soon be in Israel. And so that's what this is relating to here. And I'm just really, man, this is this is not a, I mean, it's a good sign, but not a good sign. I mean, you know, it's it's telling us we how close we are getting to Yeshua returning. But uh, I'm, I just had, I was got excited when I heard that. And so it says here in, in Luke 21, 20, and I'm going to read these few chapters here. Jesus foretells destruction of Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by army by armed forces, then know that its know that its destruction is near. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are in the middle of the town leave, and do not let those who are in the country enter, enter it. Okay, for those are the days of vintage, and so that all the things that are written will be fulfilled. Woe to them! who are pregnant, and to them who are, who are nursing in those days. For there will be great distress upon the land and wrath to his people, this people. And I told you guys I had a dream here not long ago where Yahweh flashed a vision before me. And it was like pow, uh, 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 like a wood pow, but it was babies and little young children piled up, okay? Uh, and it just reminded me of the time when Pharaoh went out looking for the baby boys. But now we read in here, woe to them who are pregnant and to them that are nursing in those days. For there will be great distress upon the land and rafter this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword. And they will be led captive into all the ethno-linguistic nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the ethno-linguistic nations until the times of the ethno-linguistic nations are fulfilled. And so I'm just going to go ahead and finish reading a little bit here. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. They say tonight is some kind of special alignment with... Uh, Jupiter and all and uh, Saturn and all the Venus, all of them lining up more and more. Uh, uh, you can see them more visible with the eye. Uh, but anyway, I know we had the blood moons the 27th of July, and we had another eclipse followed that uh, early week in uh, August. We had an eclipse of the sun partially all over the world, and the European nations uh, people could see it. We had that happen, and so we're going to be having all these signs and the sun and the moon and the stars. And on the earth, there will be distress of the ethno-linguistic nations in despair from the roar of the sea and waves. There will be people fainting from fear and from expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to happen, stand up and lift up your heads and behold because your deliverance is coming near. Oh, people, people, people. I'm just excited. I'm going to let you go and hear uh, some of this coming from uh, Stephen Denoon. And then I'm going to go to uh, our lady from King of Glory Ministries. Last night, I heard it twice now. I showed it to my fellowship today as they came over. And then last night, I heard it. So I want you to hear it. What... Uh, Lois Sharp is talking about her revelation she just got yesterday. So I'm telling you people, we are in the end at the end. You need to be preparing yourself, preparing for the coming of the Lord, doing the things he would have us to do now. Uh, stop holding on to this world. Like I talked about yesterday, stop holding on to materialism because materialism not going to save you. You see all the floods in India, all this big earthquake just hit today again. And Costa Rica had a quake. And then all over, we having quakes every minute. And we're going to be having tsunamis. She'll tell you about it. And Lois will tell you about it as well. It's all going to be happening, people, quickly before us. So we need to be really getting ourselves together, okay? Getting ourselves, giving your hearts and minds and souls to Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm telling you, I've been having all kind of 
uh, problems from family members and people attacking me and all that. But you know, it's nothing for me because I know greater, greater things are coming and we're going to have to be tested and we're going to have to stand for Yeshua, Messiah. We're going to have to not let these little sensitivities get to us people. You know, we want to fight over some nonsense. We need to be fighting and standing for the Savior. He's the only one going to save us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to let you hear Stephen Noon a little bit and I'm going to go here to uh, my friend. My friend, I love that lady so much. Lower shop and let you see what she's talking about. Okay, just listen right now. Bokito Kareem, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we do have some very breaking news coming out this morning. The Times of Israel is reporting UN chief proposes military force to protect Palestinians from Israel. Armed international missions among options floated by. Uh, Guterres, in the response to the General Assembly request to report on Hamas-led Gaza clashes. Now, <clears throat> although we're seeing this, and I'm sure many are going to say Israel will never permit UN forces to uh, be in the streets of Israel, let alone uh, protecting Gaza or the Palestinians in the West Bank, you know, this is something that is very much real, and it has been something that is being played on both sides of the fence, both by Israelis as well as the Vatican and the Palestinians. They have been working for this initiative for years. As we said before, Israel has been hijacked by a bunch of thugs that are planning on trying to play out their ideology of a uh, coming Messiah, a false Messiah, an Antichrist. Now, I'm going to be going into this in much deeper detail on Patreon later this evening or either tomorrow one. I can't say it'll be there tomorrow one, but I wanted to share with you, just give you a little insight on this because some of the things that I'll speak about are very, very volatile on this subject here. This is the article by Joel Bainerman, and I put it on my WordPress document so you guys could see it better, but I can see already I need to blow this up uh, so you can get a little bit better view of this. So we'll do that right now, just so you can kind of get a much better view. Uh, this is on Red Moon Rising on Barry Chalmish's old site there. Uh, because, because controlling the entire, uh, let me back up just a little bit, give you a little preview. Make no mistake about it, the old city of Jerusalem, as well as most of the eastern half of the city, is what the Vatican is after. Joe Bannerman stated this. He says, Why? Because controlling the old city of Jerusalem and not just church properties and being able to build whatever they want on Mount Zion is critical for the program they have planned to put in play in our capital city. That's talking about Jerusalem. The deal that it has signed with Israel via Yossi Bailing and Shimon Perez, all right, in secret and without approval of the Knesset, gives the church not only extra extraterritorial status to protect their properties, which is what the bilateral agreement the Israeli government signed with the Vatican on December 30th, 1993, put in law, all right, it's already in law, but on control over the entire city as custodians. Under what UN presence... In this way, the Jews will give up control over the old city to the Vatican. The Israeli people would have uh, have a problem with, excuse me, Vatican, the Israeli people would have a problem with to the UN. They would say, we had no choice. All right, so they are now creating that very scenario of we have no choice. <laughs> it's yeah. only in the early stages, yeah. but right now, that's what we're seeing with the UN right now. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Friday presented four options aimed at boosting the protection of the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip from sending UN rights monitors and unarmed observers to deploying a military or police force under UN mandate. You see, this is what is going on, friends. And this is what I've been trying to tell you guys from the beginning. They're playing this. It's the Hegelian dialectics. They they play both sides. Do you realize that um, Joe Bannerman said that after the agreement was signed and they agreed to give Yasser Arafat, East Jerusalem as the capital for the Palestinians, West Jerusalem would be the capital of the Israelis, that immediately 
Yasser Arafat was supposed to go and start violence against the Jews. All right? He was supposed to do that. That was what he was supposed to do. And in return, we're supposed, as Israelis, the Israeli military under the government right now, they are to incite the violence back against the Palestinians. And if they can't get the Palestinians to uprise, as it has been bought, brought out by uh, uh, another very well-known Israeli uh, who stated that many times the Arab-looking, the Sephardic-looking, uh, the, Jew, the Jews that are Sephardis that look Arabic, they'll send them in behind the lines to throw stones at the Israeli forces in order to get the Palestinians up in a, in a tizzy there to, to join in with them. It is all pre-planned, guys, and this is what I'm trying to get you to wake up to. You know, it's not against Israel. It is Israel has been hijacked by Jesuits to bring about a false messiah, a false peace. You know, we're going to get into this. Listen, join us on Patreon because I get if I go to spouting off what I really know on here, they're going to shut us down. And, well, they say they shut Alex Jones down. <laughs> I kind of sometimes I wonder if that's just not a psyop as well to see if the people would rile up. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Be joining you later this evening here on Israeli News Live on other news and prophetic insights. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But people, yeah, see what's going on? I just showed you in uh, Luke, okay, 21, uh, about the armies. And I'm telling you, they, if they're going into Israel, I'm telling you, that's just something. And it's getting close to Feast of Trumpets. Oh, man, I, I'm just like, wow, I don't know. We just have to keep watching and praying, people. But I'm going to let you go ahead and see here from Joyce, I mean, from Lois, I mean, Miss uh, Sister Lois Shop here in uh let you hear her video. Take the time and listen and share it with others. Uh, me know, I, I'm telling you, I'm just not about me. It's not about my channel. It's about all God's people getting together to do these things, to shout in the alarm, to sound the trumpet all over the world, that Yeshua is coming soon, people. All the signs are showing, you know. And so these devils and demons trying to go against God's people, but that's why he, he have given us authority over the devil, authority over demons. And that's why your spiritual warfare prayers will come in very handy. You need to be learning learning these prayers where you can speak them out loud to the enemy, okay? Because I'm telling you, it's right before us, right before us right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and put her on. I think I had her on already, so I'm going to go ahead and let you hear this, okay? Um, take this off. Okay. Shot. Today's August 17, 2018, and I was laying in my bed this morning praying, and I felt uh, God tugging at my heart with the word. Um, but before I say it, I just want to uh, put out there about um, the 18-year-old young man, um, still in the hospital. He will be there for a while. Um, he has no skin on his one leg left after the accident, so he's going to have to have some skin grafts done. He had surgery done on his back the other day. Um, his leg was supposed to have um, had surgery on it on Wednesday or Thursday. So just keep him in prayer. I know everybody has prayers needed. Keep him in prayer um, and just keep everybody in prayer. Keep God's people in prayer because um, everybody needs prayer. And before I read this, I want to say another thing. People have such an issue with um, prophets of the day and um you know, like that was back then and it shouldn't be today. And meanwhile, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And wouldn't you think if it's going to be a time like never before and never will be again, that God would be doing some absolutely amazing things in the spirit realm for his people? The devil's upping his power and his forces. I mean, um, robots are being created. I mean, they're actually communicating with each other. That's demonic entities moving in on the scene of the robots. So the devil is putting all his forces into what he has to do to try to win this war. So don't you think that God is going to be doing some outright amazing things, things that maybe never saw before happen? So don't be so quick to think that the supernatural realm 
can't really get very extraordinary to the point where we're like, wow, 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 almost every day with what God is doing. I'm beginning to see God move in ways that I've never seen him move before with instant, with prayers being instantly answered and um, outright amazing things happening. I, I'll pray a prayer and all of a sudden, boom, the answer is right there for me. He's going to do these things in these end times because we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what the prayer was that Jesus prayed, and that's what we need to focus on. We need to forget about the world because the world has no answers for you at all. Amen. Amen. All the answers that we will have in these end times are the answers from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, being the one that's in us, is the one that relays all the messages. So if the Holy Spirit's in us, don't you think we could receive prophetic words today in the world we're in? Why wouldn't we? So we have to understand that. And there's an enemy that counterfeits everything that God does. So yes, we do have to be aware of things that come out. And we do have to be aware because people have their own minds and their own thoughts. So we have to really look into the background of people, study out the things that they've done in their lives. I have a book called Emerald Eyes out there. If you want to find out about my life and the things that God has done with me, get the book. It's on lulu.com, and I'm not trying to sell the book. Um, it's a story of my life taken from a third party, basically, and um, what God has done, the amazing things that one can see when you walk in the spirit of the living God. I have a word for my people that some of you will not want to hear. You are waiting and thinking that all is well on planet Earth because you cannot bear to think that you are coming into the end times. <laughs> the world as you know it is about to go through changes that you have never seen before. And I tell you truly, my wrath is pouring down from my throne in heaven. I say there is a season for everything under the sun. And this is the season where I will have where I, where I will bring my justice everywhere I see evil dwelling. There will be a time of out-of-control behavior on what you think are fellow human beings, when in fact, what you will be looking at are demonic entities that have taken over the people who walk in their own lusts and pleasures, giving no concern to me or to you. You will see things that will make your mouth drop as evil has its final outburst of temper tantrums. It will seek to destroy everything I hold dear. And if I do not shorten those days, it would be possible that mankind would perish. Evil has the ability to literally destroy the world with all the nuclear powers that be and the robotic computers that can outsmart any person's memory. Technology has excelled beyond morality and it must be stopped before you destroy yourselves and those that I love. My remnant will go behind closed doors while I pour down my wrath against this evil that thinks it will win the battle. Insanity is its motivation, and I will stop it where it stands. As for you, my people, it is time to be ready spiritually so you can use the weapons of your warfare against it. If you want to remain ignorant, you will be sucked into the world system and be deceived like they are. You have to choose who you are going to follow, or you will follow evil. I did not create robots. I created you in my image and likeness. And I desire, and your desire for, and, and desire for you to choose me, and I desire for you to choose me as my child, and know that I am your father who loves you. Evil has created such an environment of hurt and sorrow and destruction that many of you are emotionally wounded and think, I do not love you. The devil has rights on the earth and has made sure to make you believe, I do not love you or even care that you suffer. I tell you this day, you are loved and I gave my son to set you free. No greater love than if a man lays down his life for his friend. So the greatest love was shown on the cross. Will you accept my love today and follow my son into my kingdom? Into our kingdom, he actually said. And trust us, for we love you more than you know. Time to pick up your cross and come follow us. For the season is my wrath, my indignation pouring out on the earth. 
Lava will flow, the earth will crack, tsunamis will flood the land, fires will consume, and plagues will hit major cities where the population is great. My people will be led to safety, and will you listen or fall prey to the enemy? Time is up, my people, and you will see what I mean very shortly. Love your Father who art in heaven. I believe what he means by time is up is that we're about to start seeing some major things happening. Um, we have to be ready for all of it. <laughs> it's the time for God to do what he has to do. And we have to be behind him, our Father. We have to know that what he's about to do, he has to do. He's a just God, all right? And he has to pour judgment on the earth for the sins, for the outright rebellion against him, their creator. God is going to do the same thing he did in the days of Noah, where he destroyed evil. And he will destroy mankind who is evil too. That sound might sound like a terrible thing, but to God... It's not, because they don't belong to him. They're not his children. They're the devil's children. And he will consume them with fire, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, plagues, whatever he chooses. The book of Revelation talks about all of it. So we need to be prepared and we need to be ready and we need to not go into panic mode. We need to understand that this wrath is meant for evil and he will lead us where we're supposed to be. Persecution was never said that we weren't gonna be persecuted and we will be greatly persecuted, greatly persecuted in, in these end times. That's what's about to happen. So we have to keep our eyes on the Father Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and our Savior, the one who washes clean as snow through his blood, and the Holy Spirit who gives us the power and the fire. We need the power and the fire. Amen. So we can consume yes. every evil entity that comes our direction by using the name of Jesus all the weapons of our warfare by putting up the shield of faith to block every fiery dot that gets shot at you. You have the power in the name of Jesus to block them. Somebody comes at you and says something nasty, put your shield of faith up and do not accept it. They're fiery dots. And human beings are going to be the ones that the devil uses, along with the giants, the Nephilim, all these things, the robots, all these entities that are floating around, spirits are out there coming to get us. Is that to put fear on us? No, that's to give us a heads up about what's going to happen. If we want to be ignorant and we don't want to hear it, then we're going to be washed away. If God tells you to move away from an area where a tsunami is going to hit or an earthquake is going to hit and you decide to stay there, who's the one being ignorant? Who's the one not giving you the heads up? Who's the one telling you what you have to do? This message was put out 1204, 124, 1204. I was on the phone with a friend of mine talking, and I said, I'm getting a word from the father. And I looked at the clock, it was 1204. By the time I hung up and I started to write, my clock turned to 1206. My husband walked into the kitchen, and he said, it's 1204. So I got double confirmation of this word from the father. And anybody that doesn't know what 124 means, it was a miraculous thing that happened to me when I was birthing my son. I had an out-of-body experience, and God showed me 124. And 124 is biblical timing of things. It actually represents the Garden of Eden in many ways. And the safe havens, as far as God is looking at them, he's bringing us back to a place that's kind of like going to be like a Garden of Eden, where we'll be living in those places as communities that believe in Jesus. And only those that are true believers in Jesus will be willing to walk away from their earthly things and come and stay there where he will have angelic protection upon us. The rest of you won't believe it. The rest of you will go about your daily business. 
You won't listen to the, the, the words from the Holy Spirit trying to give you a heads up about what's going to come on the earth, and you will be swept away like the world will. Does it mean you're not saved? No. It doesn't mean you're not saved. But only those that are going to listen to the Holy Spirit will be led to safe havens. It's not meant for everybody, because not everybody will be willing to give up what they have. The safe havens are places where people, we're going to give up everything. We, I've already given up everything I have. The place I live in, it was given to me. My One of my family members passed away and left me money. I was able to buy the house. God told me to give it to him, and I turned it over to him. He said, this is all part of my plan and the things I'm going to do. And I gave it over to the Lord. Everything I have belongs to him. That's all right. Why do, I, why do I have to own anything in this world? I'm going to be out of here one day. As long as I have use of it, that's good enough. So whatever we have need of in these safe havens, God's going to provide it through his people. Those that are very wealthy are going to be used to help build the buildings. Those that have spiritual insight are going to be used. Those that have gifts are going to be used. Those who can grow gardens are going to be used. Everybody's abilities that God has given them, the God-given abilities, are going to be used in the safe havens. Not everybody has to have money to come to a safe haven, but they have to be spiritually filled with the Holy Ghost, and they have to be willing to lay down their lives to follow Jesus at any cost whether they come to cut our heads off or not. We have to be willing to die for Jesus, to be worthy to follow him. And the word of God tells us if you follow brother, sister, mother, anybody, more than you follow him, you are not worthy of him. That's right. That's right. Years ago when my late husband died, I had to make a choice to follow what God was telling me to do or stick with my whole family because nobody got it at the time. They didn't get it, what God was doing. And my whole family walked out of my life, literally. And God turned me right to that scripture. Those who put family members before him are not worthy of him. And I got what he was telling me. And I made the choice to follow him. Yeah, was my heart broken? Yes, it was. But guess what? They all came back. They all came back. So God knows what he's doing. And we have to trust him. With our, with our loved ones who are not believers yet. Trust him. Trust him today with your life. Because whether we live or whether we die, we are going to be with our Lord Jesus for eternity. Amen. Our Father God Hallelujah. for eternity. Hallelujah. With the power of the Holy Spirit and with all the angels who didn't fall prey to Lucifer's plan, we will be blessed forever and ever and ever. And there's a storm coming in the background if you might hear little rumblings. Again, it comes another storm. Mm -hmm. So what's the end result in this? Love, love, love. Love one another. Okay? Love the Lord Jesus with all your strength, your mind, your soul, all that you are. All that you are. Lay your life down and follow him. When it means to take up our cross means to let go of the world and take the cross and follow him. That's what that means, to give up the world and the things of it. If you have bank accounts with funds in it, you need to be putting them into ministries that are setting up safe havens, <clears throat> ministries that are getting the gospel of Jesus out. It's time to get this stuff done before Jesus returns. Amen? And I'm Lowe's Holy Sharp, and I'll be back when he sends me back again. And you're in my prayers. Father, bless them today. Heal them today. Set them free from demonic entities yes. today and give them the knowledge that they need, the wisdom and the knowledge that they need to know what's from you and what's not. In Jesus' name, God bless you and I love you. Amen, sister. Amen, amen. What a great message. People, I'm telling you, it's so true what she's saying. That's why I want to just let her say it because I agree with every word she, she has said here. And um, it's time for us to give our life to Yeshua HaMashiach. It's time to follow our true uh, king, uh, Yeshua. You know, I, I was just looking at some stuff here not too long ago um, about the Sabbath, about all the, over the world. They are beginning to take Bibles away uh, all over the world. 
And I said, you know, that's why the Sabbath is a sign for Yeshua's people. That's why. Because we're going to be tested, people. That's why I've been telling people in Africa and India and all over the world to come out from among uh, these pagan Vatican systems that uh, Stephen Denoon just talked about. The Vatican, these Jesuits who are taking over the Protestant churches and, and lying to the people about, oh, it's, it's all going to be okay and we're going to have prosperity and you know, all this stuff they teach people that's not true because Yeshua's signs are showing all over the world that he's soon to come, people. I'm telling you, Feast of Trumpets is getting so close. I don't know if this is going to be the year for the bride. I don't know, but I just know that all these signs are showing. And so he said for the elect's sake, he was shorten the days. So you don't know. And so uh, I'm going to read this and let you guys go and enjoy the rest of the Shabbat. But uh this is coming from the perfect storm. Uh, war, economic collapse, and moral decay is America headed for Armageddon. The perfect storm, uh, I'm telling you, uh, is coming. The perfect storm is absolutely coming. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read this one page here, on uh, page 43, where it says here, The practice of dealing with familiar spirits of devils was pronounced an abomination to the Lord and was solemnly forbidden under the penalty of death. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God, a man also a woman that has a familiar spirit, uh, that is a wizard, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. Leviticus 19, 31, 20, 27. Evil angels are constantly seeking access to us. In our own strength, we have no defense against their attacks. If permitted, they can torment our bodies. You hear that? If permitted, okay? That means that you, it's up to you. It's up to you if you're using spiritual warfare, just like Lois just talked about, and uh, a lot of people are talking about using spiritual warfare. It say if permitted, okay? If permitted, they can torment our bodies, destroy our possessions, and take our lives, okay? There shall not be found among you anyone that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a neomancer for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. While on earth, Christ had perfect understanding of what that with which he was dealing. And he recognized it as direct presence and agency of evil spirits. There are few who have any just conception of the deceptive power of spiritualism and the danger of coming under its influence. Many tamper with it merely to gratify their curiosity. They have no real faith in it and would be filled with horror at the thought of yielding themselves to the control of evil spirits but they venture upon forbidden ground and the mighty destroyer exercises his power upon them against their will. Let them once be induced to seduce, sed, let me read it over. Let them once be induced to submit their minds to his direction and he holds them captive. It is impossible in their own strength to break away the bewitching and alluring spell Nothing but the power of God can deliver these ensnared souls. None are in greater danger from the influence of evil spirits than those who, in spite of the direct testimony of Scripture, deny the existence and agency of the devil and his angels. So long as we are ignorant of their wiles, they have inconceivable advantage. That is why as we approach the close of time when Satan is to work with greater power to deceive and destroy, he conceals himself and his manner of working. Just before us is the hour of temptation. I'm telling you, this is really prophetic today. I'm telling you, this is what was in my spirit right now. Just before us is the hour of temptation, the hour of testing. I'm telling you, it's coming. They're going to be putting a, 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 a law in the land for us to bow down and worship these false gods, uh, the worship Sunday. And I've been telling people to come out from among them, come out from among her, as it says in Revelation 14. Go read Revelation 14, 17, 18. Okay, about this Vatican system, the mother of harlots. Okay, you need to be coming out, people. So it said, just before us is the hour of temptation. 
which shall come upon all the world. That's right. It's going to be a worldly thing they're going to do. Okay. The whole world will wander after the beast. Okay. It says in scripture. In that hour, Satan will not yield one inch of ground except as he, he is driven back by the power of heaven. We must meet him today as Christ met him with the words. That's right. It is written. Get behind me, Satan. That's what you need to do, people. Many will soon be confronted by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appeal to their tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain demonic lies. I was talking to my grandson the other day and he was talking to me. He had seen an orb of, of, of a light come through the darkness. He was sitting in the car with a friend and then he felt so high all afternoon in the Holy Spirit. And I told him, yes, but to try the spirits, make sure they are from Yeshua and not from the devil because the devil would be doing miracles. Okay. And so we need to be reading our Bibles right now, people, and praying, as Lois just said, uh, praying for wisdom, praying for knowledge, praying for truth, people, because the hour of temptation is before us and will be very, very soon, like we never seen it before. So, Father, thank you for the people watching today. I ask that you be with them in their homes, Father. Uh, bring your Holy Spirit and your angels to help them, Father, to discern wickedness, to discern holy, evil spirits, and helping them to use spiritual warfare, Father. Use spiritual warfare uh, as you have told us to use it, Father, to speak it, Father. And so we just thank you so much. We just bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We bind up the spirit of backlash. We bind up the spirit of hatred. We bind up the spirit of death. We bind up the spirit of all these demonic powers. We bind up the spirit of every hex and vex and voodoo and black magic and witches, Father, and sorcery. Oh, we bind them up today, Father. We bind up every evil uh, disease and sickness in, among us today. We ask that you Send your Holy Spirit, Father, to your people. Send your spirit, your power, Father, where we can stand, where we can shine like never before in these evil times. And we thank you so much for your Sabbath. Your Sabbath is a sign for your people. We know that the Sunday is not the Sabbath. And we just thank you for having a, a, a sacred day that you have set aside, a holy day that you sanctified, where you can talk to your children, Father, all at once, all over the world. And we thank you for Sabbath. And we just love you and we thank you. We praise your wonderful name. And we ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to go away. As it says on the screen, the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In Exodus 28 to 10. And I'm telling you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed anything. Only thing he did was take away all these ceremonial laws where we don't need sheep and goat and all these things to carry as a uh, to sacrifice anymore because he is our living sacrifice Yeshua HaMashiach we don't need no other king before him we don't need no other gods before him oh people understand that these these are the times of Elijah as I love my my friend Paul Weber like to say so uh you guys go and have a blessed day and I'll be with you on another video I just had to come and bring these messages to you. So you guys have a wonderful Saturday night and enjoy your Sunday. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Shabbat Shalom. Love you so much. Bye-bye. Shabbat Shalom.